A science teacher from Western Sydney has been named one of the top 10 teachers, get this, in the world. Casuala High School science teacher Ken Silburn is a finalist in the Global Teacher Prize, which recognises the work of exceptional teachers around the world. To highlight how they're making a difference in the lives of their students, Ken Silburn joins me now in the studio, having raced from school. Ken, thank you so much for being here. Firstly, a huge congratulations. How does this feel? Oh, it's absolutely awesome. The, the last week has been... Just the lead up to, to yesterday yeah. um, has been incredible. So tell me, why do you think you've been chosen as one of the ten in the world for this prize? I'll get you to mention later what the prize actually is. The, um, back in 2015, I received the, the Prime Minister's Prize for, for Science Teaching for, for high schools. Yeah. And, and I think from that there's been a lot of you know, extra recognition that's, that's came my way because of that, um, you know, you, you highlighted. But I've... My school, um, Kashula High School, we've got such a dedicated staff, mm. um, not just in science, right across the board. We tend to do great things. Tell us about your school. Who, who goes there? What's your main kind of focus, I guess? This is a, this is a part of Sydney, south-western yeah, Sydney, south-west. Which yeah. is often seen as a challenging area to, um, to try and really engage kids and really give them some sense of a future. Well, I think we've got a big melting pot of kids, a uh, big spectrum. Yeah, um, but I think when you look at the school, with the the way the school's set up, with a, an idea of focusing on on learning, um, that makes a big difference. And the kids kids love to learn. When you say focusing on learning, you'd think that that's what every school should do. Where do other schools maybe get it wrong? Focusing on learning in the sense of hands-on work. Um, hands-on work, but very much getting students to actually realise that they're actually at, at school to learn. Right. Um, not to the, not to socialise. I mean, we it's good fun. But you know, kids need to, to know how to learn, not just to, to know the facts about you know, just anything. They, they need to know how to learn. One of the things you wrote uh, on the website when there's a little bio of all the ten finalists, you said that you um, still get a buzz out of seeing students smile as they enter the classroom. So many students don't smile when they enter classrooms. If you've ever seen that on a student's face, do you think, mm, what's going wrong here? How can we tap into that person? How can we engage them? Yeah, look, engagement's the key. Um, you know, if a kid's not switched on to what they're doing, they, they won't learn. Mm. So um, we try and make science fun. So in the classroom, we'll have music. You know, if you're not doing anything, um, that's, you know, that's, you've got to be quiet. Um, lots of hands-on activities, as you said. Um, lots of activities outside of school. And I think just focusing on the positive. Ken, tell us, uh, if you are the winner, what do you win? Uh, it's a million dollars. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Um, I mean, it sounds great, you know, a million dollars, but uh, that's actually a million dollars to set up a, a foundation and to, um, to get things moving, not just in Australia, but overseas as well. So what do you think you'd do if you won? Have you thought to that point, or are you still kind of just overwhelmed with the space that you're in at the moment? Um, I was lucky last year I did a project with NASA in India and, and then extended my trip to do some work in schools. And when you compare what we're doing in Australia, uh, we've got lots of resources, but you look at countries uh, like India, um, you've got the haves and mm. you've got a lot of people who, who haven't got um, the education. So I think education's a right and I'd just like to make sure that science teaching goes right across the world. So. The reason you became a science teacher, I understand, is because you had a fantastic teachers in your youth. We often see as teachers important for our kids, but we don't necessarily think your role is vital to also perhaps inspiring the next generation of teachers who want to do the same thing as you have. Yes, um, I was very lucky. I went to Punchbowl Boys High School and um, had some very good teachers. Um, a terrific teacher was probably my best was my music teacher. Yeah. And so nothing to do with science, but. Um, but he was there every morning for band practice, and um, that was Bill Fraser. He passed away last year, unfortunately, but it was amazing. Like just for his funeral, students turned up from that uh, 30 years ago. Wow! But um, but you get you get these teachers that that spark, and it it doesn't have to be science. It can be anything. Mm. So, Ken, when you've been walking around the corridors this last week, do your students, does the school kind of realise the huge gravity of this 
finalist, you know, one of ten in the world. It's it's pretty incredible. Have they yeah. came coming up to you and saying good on you? Well, I've, I've got a few of that because it was only released yesterday. Yeah. And um, but a lot of our science kids, um, they look at themselves as being, you know, it's the prize for them too because you, know, you don't get a, a prize like the Prime Minister's Award for for being the teacher. It's the teacher with with a terrific staff. Yeah. And and terrific kids. So um, the, the kids really got a buzz out of the filming, which, which we did for it. That's great. It's such fantastic news. Congratulations. Just being in that category of 10 is an extraordinary achievement. Ken, thank you so much for dropping in. All right, thanks for having me.